In this video, we will be making four servings of a potato moussaka. First, let's prepare our ingredients, starting with two medium-sized onions. Dice the onions by cutting off the stem, but leaving the root. Then cut the onion in half from stem to root. Peel the skin from each half. Lay each half flat on the cutting board and make multiple vertical cuts, but not cutting all the way to the other end so that it stays attached. Then make a horizontal cut through the middle of the onion. Slice the onion in the opposite direction to the first vertical cuts we made and you should have some finely diced pieces. Repeat for the rest of the onions. Once diced, set it aside in a bowl until ready for use. Next, let's mince four cloves of garlic by lightly smashing it with the side of the knife. Then cut off the end and the skin should easily peel off. I find that the easiest way to mince garlic is by first smashing each clove to break it up. Then you can chop it all until it is minced. Set it aside in a bowl until ready for use. Now we need to prepare the potatoes. Here I have about 1.5 kilograms or 3.3 pounds of potatoes. This will work with any type of white potato, just the cooking time might differ. First let's peel the potatoes. Once peeled, slice them thinly with a sharp knife. There is not a specific thickness I am going for, just try to make each slice similar in thickness so it cooks evenly. If you want to ensure your slices are an even thickness, or if you aren't confident in doing it by hand, you can also use a mandolin slicer. In any case, once all the potatoes are sliced, set them aside until ready for use. This is optional, but I am also going to prepare some fresh parsley. Here I have one bunch of fresh parsley, but you could also replace this with one teaspoon of dried parsley or dried oregano if you prefer. If you were using fresh parsley, remove the leaves from the stems. Roughly chop the parsley leaves with a sharp knife, but try not to overdo it to avoid bruising them too much. Set the chopped parsley aside until ready for use. Lastly, let's prepare the yogurt mixture for topping. Add 200 grams of Greek yogurt to a bowl. I am using low fat Greek yogurt to limit the fat content of the dish, but you can use full fat if you prefer. Also add three eggs to the same bowl. For seasoning, add half a teaspoon of cooking salt or a quarter teaspoon of table salt, half a teaspoon of ground black pepper, and optionally an eighth teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Then mix everything together, ensuring there are no visible strands of unmixed egg. Place this in the fridge until ready for use. With all the ingredients prepared, we can now prepare the meat filling. Heat up a stainless steel pan on high heat for 1-2 to two minutes or until properly preheated to help prevent the protein from sticking to it. Then add 1 tablespoon of any neutral flavoured high heat cooking oil, like vegetable oil in my case. Swirl the oil to coat the surface. Add 500 grams or 1.1 pounds of the minced meat of your choice. Here I am using lean pork mince with around 10% fat content to limit the fat intake of the dish. However, you could use higher fat pork or replace it with lamb, beef or a combination of minced meats. Whatever you use, spread it out in a single layer and leave it for a couple of minutes to sear on one side. Check to see the colour of the meat by flipping a small piece over. And once you are happy with the amount of searing you have, add the onions. Also add a decent pinch of salt to help the onion cook down faster. Now we just need to mix everything together, breaking up the meat as we go. We want to keep cooking this until the onions have softened, the meat is cooked through, and most of the excess liquid has been evaporated. You will be able to hear when this happens when the sound changes from a steaming sound to more of a sizzling sound. Once you are there, turn the heat to low and add the garlic. Mix the garlic through for about a minute or until it becomes fragrant. Then add one teaspoon of smoked paprika or the paprika of your choice, one teaspoon of ground black pepper and about half a teaspoon of cooking salt or a quarter teaspoon of table salt. Mix everything through for another minute. Then add 1 tablespoon of tomato paste and mix it through over medium heat for about 2 minutes or so. Then turn off the heat, taste for seasoning and adjust as needed. 
I needed to add more salt to get it to the taste I wanted. Once seasoned, add a quarter cup of basmati rice and our chopped parsley if you were using it, but reserve a little parsley for garnish if you want. The rice is there to absorb any extra liquid while it bakes so that it doesn't become too soggy and can hold its shape. Basmati rice works well for this since it holds its shape well even when cooked for a long duration. You can use another white rice if you prefer, but it will probably become a little more mushy in the final dish. Add the cooked mixture back into one of the bowls and set it aside. Place the pan back on the heat and add one teaspoon of vegetable stock powder along with a half a cup of water. You could also just use pre-made vegetable stock if you have it, just omit the stock powder in that case. As the liquid heats up, scrape all the caramelized bits off the pan and reserve the liquid. Now we are ready to assemble the moussaka. But first, preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit. First we will need a baking tray. My tray is around 23 by 33 centimeters or 9 by 13 inches for reference. Start by taking one third of your sliced potatoes and layering them on the bottom of the tray. You want to make sure there is overlap between the slices of potato because they will shrink a little while baking. You also want to lightly season the top of each potato layer with salt and pepper, which I forgot to do on the first layer. Then add half of the meat mixture and spread it out evenly. Take about half of the remaining potatoes and layer them in the same way as the first layer. I seasoned this layer with extra salt and pepper to compensate for missing the first layer. Then add the other half of the meat mixture followed by the remaining potatoes and lightly season them. Then add the pan liquid over the top of the layers. Cover the tray tightly in foil. We are going to bake the moussaka until the potatoes are fully softened, which could take anywhere from 30 to 50 minutes depending on the type of potato used and how thin they were sliced. I recommend starting with 30 minutes of baking, then check them and continue cooking if needed. After 30 minutes, check the doneness of the potatoes by poking a knife through the layers. There should be very little resistance going all the way to the bottom. In my case, they still needed a little longer, so I covered the tray again and put it back in the oven for another 10 minutes. And after another 10 minutes of baking, they were ready. At this stage, remove the foil and add the yogurt mixture over the top. Tilt the tray to ensure even coverage over the surface. Then put this back in the oven uncovered at 200 degrees Celsius or 400 Fahrenheit. Now we just want to cook this until the topping sets and it bakes to a golden brown colour. This should take somewhere around 10 to 20 minutes, but go by colour rather than time. After around 15 minutes in my case, the moussaka was done. You could cut it up right away if you like, but it will be soft and likely break apart. If you have the patience, I would recommend letting it cool down to room temperature before slicing it so that it holds its shape better. I let mine cool down completely before cutting it into quarters. Also make sure to cut or wedge something along the edges to separate them from the tray. By the way, you could also cut this into 6 or even 8 pieces if you want smaller portions. Once cut, use a spatula to scoop each slice out into containers. My containers are 1 litre or about 1 liquid quart for reference. Finally, sprinkle the remaining chopped parsley for garnish if you reserved some. Put the lids on and store these in the fridge for up to one week. To serve, just microwave to reheat and enjoy. Each serving ended up being 692 calories with 39 grams of protein, 89 grams of carbohydrates and 21 grams of fat.